Now today I started with some raw carbon fiber parts that we had made on a previous video. I showed the proper prep for getting the primer to stick. The primer, the method that I've used, I compared it to the weave ones that we just finished and what's different about them, the difference in finishing each type. I got the priming done and because we had a very, very cold day today, putting parts up by the heating vent, it accelerated it to the point where we got them painted blue and here right at the end of the day we actually even got the clear on and got the parts in the garage drying all in one day and that was very good because we had to bring Craig back to the airport. About today my son Craig goes back to Denver and we're going to take him back to the airport later but I got a little time this morning. I thought I'd buff out those MT-09 parts and see if the magnets come in the next day or two and we can install them permanently and make up the other set that we're going to make to paint blue that matches the tank. Now we had a super nice visit with Craig and I'm sure he was in a garage yesterday eating his heart out looking at the motorcycles and stuff. I know that's the way it is. When you're a young man, when you're an old man, you come out and you work on the bikes every day. I'm going to work on them today and as soon as he's back in Denver safely, we'll be returning to having full-time work on the fleet, mainly on the MT-09. I'm really itching to go back full-time. So these little pieces that, that go in here, I wanted to make a set that was carbon fiber and a set that was painted to match this. And the, the carbon fiber ones are actually ready to buff. I'm going to try to get them buffed out before I have to take Craig to the airport. Now John has methodically been working on how we want to do these I want to have a different logo here. I want the same exact type of lettering. He's made me several samples of things. We're going to be working on that soon. But I wanted to do that. I don't want to get the horse ahead of the cart. I want to finish these parts up first. And a big thing is the custom wheels. We want to make the silver wheels. We've already made a test wheel that came out great. We're going to be working on those wheels over this, this whole restoration season. Now the next step for us is to buff out the two little parts that we made in previous day. So step one is just to get this wet sanded down with some 2000 grit and we'll get out the 8065. They're small enough parts I can do them by hand but I wanted these to be totally buffed out and if the magnets come today or tomorrow we can put these on permanently and either way I can start working on the equivalent thing. I have some solid carbon fiber that doesn't have the weave in it and what I would like to do with that is paint them blue and then be able to evil twin the bike out and for people that don't understand what evil twinning is, is when you have one bike and you change parts from time to time just to make it feel like you have more than one bike. Or if you have multiple bikes, it makes it feel like you have even more. Anyway, these parts came out very nice and I was really happy. I put the pattern making and the making it apart. And yesterday we, uh, we finished them up but we didn't have time to do the final thing, because we need the magnets. We absolutely need magnets. I only, ha I only have enough magnets for one set, but they'll be coming in the next couple days. So the parts are now flattened out with 2000 grit, ready for some 8065, and they should be a relatively quick buff out. They're relatively small parts, and they're relatively smooth. Should be 10-15 minutes, and we'll be ready to move on to the next step. And this is the material I found, whether you buff by hand or with a buffing wheel, or with a palm buffer, the, either way. This is, this is the best material I've found so far. Now, whenever you're sanding with the 2000 grit, it just takes a minimum of effort with this material, even if you do it by hand. And I wanted to just show, you know, just, just how much effort this really is. And a lot of times you can even do it while the part is attached to the motorcycle. This is easy. We have it right in our hand right now. And it's just a, I, I would say 10 minutes the most. This will be just like polished up like a mirror. I put the last half of this in fast forward just to show. Didn't want the video to get too long, but it, it goes pretty quickly. That's good material. And I always find smaller parts are just easier and quicker to do by hand instead of trying to buff them with a machine. In 8065, if you buff by hand or machine, it's just good material. Now they buffed up nice. They're going to look real nice once they're installed on the bike. I'm looking forward to getting them put on. But we next thing, oh, I forgot to mention, because I'm trying not to leave out any steps. I took the back, some 80 grit paper, made it rough. 
so that the magnets will, the glue, epoxy, whatever we're going to use here, will hold that nice and steady. Now this material, as long as you don't have a fisheye issue, usually buffs up so easy, you could buff it up by hand. The material itself is great. The only issue I've ever run into is when you wind up having fish eyes in it. Now I may have enough time here. This is the template that I traced it out. There's no grain in this, so I'm just looking to cut pieces out. I'll get the jigsaw, cut these out, and then do a final fit on them. They don't have a dedicated side, good side or bad side. This is just solid carbon fiber. What I'm going to try to do, of course, prime these, get them nice and smooth, radius all the edges off, and then paint them the blue that matches the tank as the final step and clear and buff them out. So I'll have two, two sets of these, a blue set and a carbon fiber set at some point in time. And the thing I found is just use slow speed and when you're, when you're at lows buy an extra box of uh, blades. This stuff is really rough on blades. Always have a few spare blades when you do use it. Now the last little bit, I try to always leave the line on. I can grind up to the line with the belt sander. A lot easier than trying to follow that line as the carbon fiber is really rough on those blades. Gone through a few of those blades already on this job. And this is where if you're not careful, you won't have to trim your fingernails for quite a while. Okay, our next step is to get all the rough edges on this. This is solid carbon fiber. I want to have a radius, a nice radius around the edge so that it picks up the light. Unlike the part that we made with carbon fiber, this will not have that problem because it'll be painted. You won't see the grain at the end and we'll have to make it flat and it'll stick out like a sore thumb. This will be one totally smooth, totally shiny part when we're done with it. And this will really give us some opportunities when it comes time to evil twin the bike out we'll be able to change your windshield change your side covers and i've even thought at some point in time have a spare set of wheels someday it's all part of the fun of evil twinning and cutting out the second part of course pretty redundant always good to put this in fast forward so you don't fall asleep And I'm not kidding, that belt sander can be a dangerous tool, boy, you, you don't pay attention or don't have enough coffee, you put your fingertip down there, ooh, it hurts just thinking about it. Now looking back, we spent a lot of time making this one precision template, but now we've made four, I think they're in pretty good shape, we might have, might have to do a little fine tuning, these I know fit, but we can't do anything with these till we get our other sets of magnets. That was pretty productive use of time while uh, we're waiting for Craig's flight. Well, after all that chaos, it seems like the flight might be on time. <laughs> Boy, we have had, they've had so many cancellations lately, so we've been on pins and needles. Anyway, that was a good productive use of time. Now, this is just one of the latest late logos that John is working on. And we've been working together and going back and forth together, but uh, again, that's a, that's a ways into the future. And we got to get to the airport today, one way or the other. We checked the weather report for Craig's flight back to Denver, and it's <laughs> potentially snow, and they've already had eight inches of snow in Denver, so the adventure begins. And I think in the coffee drinking championship, I have to give him the uh, first place. He's going to the Super Bowl of coffee drinking. So we're off to Newark Airport. So far, so far, no snow. <laughs> that might change. We don't know. It's always an adventure going to Newark Airport. And we're just coming up on uh, where it won't be freezing, so might be able to paint this afternoon. Who knows? Unpredictable day. Nothing quite as much fun as waiting in line at Newark Airport. <laughs> it just can't be any more fun than this, especially when it's busy. <laughs> you can see the beautiful Ferris wheel here off in the background. Well, I can't wait to go for a ride on that. <laughs> Not really. 
and beautiful MetLife Stadium. Who would not want season tickets? Oh, we survived another trip to Newark Airport. Oh, holy mackerel. No snow yet, either. Oh, it is gloomy, but I think we're gonna be able to get some painting done today. Well, that trip to the airport. <laughs> you, you need an extra cup of coffee after a trip to Newark Airport. You need vodka. I'm back from the airport, guys. Wanna share a cup of coffee? Oh, that coffee tastes so good on a day like today. <laughs> Boy, when seeds are free, they, they don't miss a trick. Free seeds, but if I gave them coffee, they'd want free coffee too. What do you think this is, Starbucks? Okay, now I'm ready, and only now, ready to go to work. So back to the shop here, and this is a step I didn't want to leave out. Even though I've made these very accurately from patterns, I want to go out, make sure they fit, and then decide which side goes on which side, because they are... I, I don't need to refinish both sides, and the side I'm going to use to attach the magnets to, I want to roughen it up. So the, the pattern we made has really served us well, and in a roundabout way, it saved us a lot of material. In fact, we still have a whole sheet we haven't used, and for one of our future parts that we may be able to make, and who knows when, where, it'll depend on when the windshield comes in. Amazon has been pretty unpredictable about delivering the first windshield, too. What I have to do is take these magnets outside. These are the ones I've cut down. I don't have the, the magnets that I'm really going to use. These are just test magnets. Take these out. Make sure they're a perfect fit. And if it, if it hasn't snowed yet, if it doesn't start snowing, I'm going to get these sanded down, get all the edges radius, and in a minimum, even if it's rainy, if it's snowing or raining, I can prime them. But then I want to get the blue on and the clear. And if it doesn't snow all day, by the end of the day, they'll be in blue. And I can get a look at what they look like. Now, as careful as I've been to make everything a precision fit, there's always a chance that something grew or something shrunk. So, and I don't have the real magnets yet to do a final test, but I really want to get this close. Because once it's painted, I won't be able to trim it in. And I've, I've carefully taken all the, this is solid carbon fiber, by the way, unidirectional. So what it means, all the weave is going in one direction. It's not attractive looking material, but what it is, uh, when I sand this down and prime it, this sh and I'm done buffing it out, it should look just like the tank, which of course is the ultimate goal. And let's see how close we've got it now. And if we're a little, huh? <laughs> Maybe it's my lucky day. I brought the sanding block out for nothing. But anyway, it does look like we've got a really nice fit there. Of course, I won't know until I get the magnets that belong there. But what I want to do is I want to take a picture now before and after. Because this the material almost looks like the flat finish that's on here. And what can I say? It's, I think when it's blue, it's going to kind of match here and everything's in. And we do that nose piece. Every one of these little steps is going to make it just a little bit nicer. Now, I always think of one of the things I wanted to improve the appearance of. I, I never knew why they left those bolts showing. They didn't make this solid. But again, I don't work for Yamaha. They don't work for me either, so it's even. But... Making that piece and filling it in, I think that's going to be a nice little upgrade. And I can look at it before and after down by my computer. Now to me, when that piece is filled in, the, the whole motorcycle looks more finished. That's always the criticism of the MT-09 styling, that they never finished the nose. But of course, remember, this is not an expensive motorcycle. This is a very, very inexpensive motorcycle. So, And the thing I never liked right from the day I bought it, that tail section with the tail light down there... I, we got rid of that. Working on, I call it upgrades, it's not really upgrades, it's personalizing it, has been a challenging thing. But the whole reason it's worth spending this time and energy and money, the reason it's all worth it to me is because I've already ridden a bike a year, and I really do like and enjoy every minute I've ridden it. Now to do a final fit on the other side, I want to have the bike up vertical on a stand. Now I'm probably being overly fussy about the fit here, and I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't even recognize, they wouldn't even notice that I, that I made this part, but again, I notice it, 
and it works for me. And this one doesn't, because of the magnets. To me, that's one of the changes that's worth the effort to do. And to me, both sides of the motorcycle look a lot cleaner just by filling in that gap. Now, the nice thing is you have to adjust the shock, and that's why they left that gap in the original piece. I originally thought I'd have to drill a hole in it because I was going to epoxy these parts in, but with the magnets, I can just, just pull that part out, adjust the shock, and put it back. So if the magnets work to my satisfaction, I don't have them in stock yet, but, and, and if not, then we'll have to go to plan B. Again, I always like to look at these little detail changes from every angle possible. And, you know, even if I left them flat black or painted them flat black, it still looks better than having that hole there. As I look at pictures I've taken in the past, having that hole in a frame, to me, is one of the ugliest parts of the bike. Now, granted, this is not a bike, that a high-end bike that they have all the parts. You have to kind of add the parts and add these little touches, the little windshield. And I imagine, and they do make a... a uh, a version of this in England that's about, I don't know, $1,500 more that does have some of these little changes but and different paint job and stuff. But at this, the challenge is now, when I'm done with this, this will be a very personal motorcycle to me. And that little logo, John is still working on the logo. See how that logo comes to a point in the lower, just before the scoop starts? To me, that's a critical thing, and we're going to be working. I'm working with John on that every day now. Now, I also was hoping, sooner or later, I'm going to get that windshield from China. I want to have the, the other one in stock before I paint it. So I want to have the choice, of course, that I can evil twin it anytime I want. I don't want to just have one, and then I find out they went out of business in China or something. And probably what I'll do is I'll keep the new one intact in a, in a clear uh, the package it comes in and paint this one. We'll see. I'm doing this whole project one small step at a time. And every one of these things is in the eye of the beholder. Time to paint. So before I prep the part, I wanted to share some really good basic 101 information about carbon fiber. This type of carbon fiber is typically used for an appearance part. This is not a structural part. Most, almost always, it's an appearance part that has a beautiful look, sparkles in the sun, whatever. But very, very unlikely this would be a structural wing spar or a propeller or something that really, you really had a lot of stress on it. This is unidirectional material, and you can buy this off the internet. It's relatively expensive. I believe this is eighth inch, but I don't really remember. But And cutting it is going to be really difficult to cut without wearing a blade out. You see how it, it does not cut like wood does. It's very difficult, and you buy a, an extra pack of blades when you're going to do it. But the thing of this is, now I can put a finish on this. Now, almost always when you're dealing with anything carbon fiber, it came from a mold. When it comes from a mold like this, what happens is there's release agent on it. So I want to clean and sand that off. And a lot of times when you prime it, now when, with, with clear parts, you can't do that. But if you're going to paint the part, you want to get that, that there's not a single fish eye anywhere in the part. Prime it, reprime it, sand it, reprime it, whatever you have to do, doesn't matter. Because that, once you have a fisheye in there, it's just going to keep coming up right up through the clear. So we're going to be real careful about sanding this and prepping it before we put on the primer. Now these parts that have a bright, shiny finish, they're very attractive, but they're not anywhere near as strong if we were going to use this to hold the back wheel on or something. This would not be the material of choice. So it's always good to know ahead of time when you're working with carbon fiber, what's, what's really going on here? What's the purpose of this? Are we trying to make it pretty or structural? And in the case of both, sometimes they combine both of those materials. But for right now, we want to get a nice finish on that solid carbon material. So I'm hoping I can get this with the, with the macro lens. You can see, see that what that is? That's a strand of carbon that as you're sanding it, becomes a splinter, it becomes a needle, a hypodermic needle. And when you're sanding anything carbon fiber, if you have protective gloves, now I've done it enough that I'm like a big tough guy, I don't use the gloves that much, but it's a good idea if you have, if you're new to this and you don't really find that splinter, that splinter finds you very quickly. So I've previously washed these parts with simple green. Now I'm gonna take, this is sticky back 400 sandpaper, set up a block, 
because I don't see what I don't want to do is have my thumb in here and sanding and catch one of those splinters. So by using a sanding block, you, you minimize the chance you're going to catch a splinter. And the first time you catch one, you'll become a believer. So the objective will be to get this radius, get it nice and smooth, and the side that we're going to see, get it etched enough that the first coat of primer will get a good tooth. And it doesn't matter what material you're using, <laughs> carbon fiber is like anything else. You need a tooth for the primer, a tooth. Now luckily I still have some of this M600 left over from years ago when you could buy this. John Pothia found some source for buying it on the internet, but it's really super expensive now. Years ago it was $8 a gallon. And this is the best degreaser, but of course <laughs> beggars can't be choosers. So I want to do the final degreasing on this. Try to get a coat of primer on it before it snows and maybe even get the blue on it. I'm, I'm playing a whole day by ear because I don't know how this weather is going to play out. I want to use primer sealer. The thing that's most important is that it has the word sealer in it. I want to seal against the carbon fiber because on that carbon fiber there's probably going to be some release agent, some fish eyes. So what we're going to do, as soon as we paint it on, if I see a lot of fish eyes, I wipe it right off with acetone, let it dry, put another coat on. There'll probably be less fish eyes, wipe it off again, and sometimes there's none. You never know, but you've got to go back and forth actually washing the part with the sealer and then get a coat of sealer on it. And then have that dry, of course. But that's the key word, sealer, when you're picking out a primer for this type of a job. So we made, we can get around the edge of this. And again, I've cleaned that as much as I possibly can, but you never know. Fish eyes are a, a constant problem. And that whole trick, the trick of tricks, you prime it, it doesn't, it has fish eyes, wipe it right off, let it dry a few minutes and just keep doing it over and over and you'll eventually get, and now the thing, you'll get it. The thing you can't do, if you if you have a clear piece like the other the other parts of this, you, you can't wipe it off and just prime it again. Well, you've got to put the clear on, work with the fish eyes and it, but that's a whole, and when we get a part with a lot of fish eyes, I'm going to show how I do that. But right now, let's hope the primer, I'm going to go outside, it isn't snowing yet. See if we can get this primed. The objective here, two light coats of primer and let it dry before we paint the blue. Now it looks like we don't have any fish eyes in here at all, but you never know. That's got to dry up and we're going to put it up by a heating vent for about a half an hour. Let it dry up, mix up another batch of the blue and hopefully, if there's no fish eyes in it, go right over it with blue. And, boy, that'll be our lucky day. And so far, if you only knew how cold it was out here. Cold, but looks like snow any minute. They're predicting snow, but so far, no snow. This time of year, that heating vent is our best friend. <laughs> and that's going to sit there a while. Usually a half an hour, 45 minutes. Got to be dry to the touch. I'm not going to sand it, do anything to it. Because it doesn't look like we have any fish eyes in there at all, which means we're very lucky. Sometimes you, it makes you crazy when you start having fish eyes. But then I have uh, the blue. I'll be able to spray the blue as long as it's not snowing. And this is the dedicated blue that Dennis mixed up for us. And it, so far it's been a pretty good match. I'm going to mix up a small batch for the small gun just to do these small, two small pieces. And just so we keep the record straight, this is the, the thinner that we're using in the Chromax. And by the way, Chromax, if you look out on there, or just, just put on your channel Chromax, they have a lot of good videos out there. And the objective is to get on two coats of blue. Now, this is not really going to shine until we put the clear on it, but that laid out nice. No fish eyes at all. We're very lucky. I always say luck, not skill, because fish eyes <laughs> have a way of uh, intimidating you anyway. That looks real good now. I'm going to put that back up by the heating vent, and maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, if it's not snowing, put some clear on it, and then put it out in the garage. And thank you, Karen, for monitoring the weather the whole day today that uh, I was able to get this done, because I was. you don't want to mix up the paint and get outside and it starts snowing in the middle of your work. Anybody with a hundred year old plus house 
knows the heat never shuts off in a winter in our houses. No exception. That's going to dry up very quickly. That really worked out great. I'm so happy we didn't have any fish eyes because I've had carbon fiber fish eyes can make you crazy. And these parts came out real nice. Wow. I'm just as happy as could be. Now, but we still don't have the magnets, so no matter what happens, we're going to hit a dead end here today. Well, it's almost an hour later. The heating vent has done its trick. We're going to try to get some clear on this part. Hopefully, two coats about 20 minutes apart and put it in the garage. And this is the clear that we've been using. And thank you, Joe Padula. This is the leftover from the Ducati repair. This clear has worked very, very well and buffs out easily. A good indicator if the, the material is ready for the clear. You, it's not uh, wet to the touch and it's dull. The clear is then going to make that nice and shiny and we want to be careful we get the edge because what I want is the light when you're looking at certain angles the light shine right along the edge that's going to be one of the features that I like about these parts hopefully I'll get that let's see if we, let's see if it snows before we get too excited it's a four to one mix and I have my little container marked with a sharpie marker so I'm putting half amounts in just want to make enough to coat this part two coats and of course Anytime you're using anything that's two-part, a mask is a must, an absolute must. Especially on a day like today, you can see the wind was blowing pretty good by the time we got ready to shoot the clear. Well, this really worked out great today. We beat the snow. Maybe it's still going to snow later, I don't know. Parts are ready to just dry overnight. We're going to leave them out in the garage. And tomorrow morning, hey, uh, the next day, we should be able to uh, wet sand these with 2000 grit and buff them out. And the paint match is really good. All right. Now, I've always enjoyed working and making my own carbon fiber parts. And I've tried to pass that information on to people that might want to do it too. And obviously, you can just buy them in a store or you can just buy a stock bike and don't do anything. But it's what you decide to do. Because all the motorcycles... No two people are going to think about them alike. To me, I bond with a motorcycle when I make these little changes, and I, I ride it for a year, and, and I've really enjoyed the MT-09, so I'm really not hesitant to put any time or energy into it. But, again, it, it's an individual thing, and you do whatever makes you happy. That's always the best choice of all. Anyway, this is one of the parts we made from scratch on previous videos, and we post something up every day. So if you're new to our channel, I hope you did enjoy the video, and we do try to work on motorcycles almost every day. Again, we do try to post up something every day. We do a lot of paint work. We do a lot of little detailing, things that you can do yourself. You really no money involved, just a lot of a, a lot of labor. We love to work with carbon fiber. We make parts from scratch and otherwise, from molds and from sheet. And over the last oh, my 60 years of collecting motorcycles, I've got a humble collection of one bike from every 10 year period that I've been involved in motorcycling. I like to share the rides. I like to share the adventures. I like to share the meetups that we have with our friends. And there's just no part of motorcycling that I don't enjoy. I like to go to the track. I like, I love to ride dirt bikes until my body wore out. It, every part of it entertained me. I love the custom aspect that you can take a bike and make it your own. You can add, and whether you like to buy parts or make them, it really doesn't matter. It just helps you bond with the motorcycle. And of course, I love evil twins. I love taking one bike and making two bikes out of it. So if you enjoyed the video, I hope you share it with your friends. And of course, I hope most of all that we'll see you tomorrow. And thanks again for watching.